You understand? But people don't know it. Meanwhile, we have it within our community. Oh, okay. You understand? Yes. And uh, this rice, we don't know how it is. Africa, I'm talking about my country. From our experience, uh, rice importation have been our major problem concerning our economy. Mm. Okay. Rice importation into the country have damaged our economy. And if care is not taken, and if we don't realize this, to have a substitute which we are blessed with within Africa, so that people will uh, wash their mind from this rice since mm -hmm. we have a substitute for it. Mm -hmm. When we are able to do this, our economy will automatically stabilize mm. without the help of any Western. Amen. But that. when you don't value what is around you and you begin to patronize what people have and leave yours, that's what will happen to you as African. Since every day and day out, uh, our people will be crying. The food crops, uh, uh, price of food is high. Price of food is high. Mm. Meanwhile, you don't want to venture into agriculture. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you expect price of food to be high when you depend on importation, yeah. importing food? You don't want a uh, price of food to be high. While you are blessed with uh, a fertile land, you said I have agriculture, uh, sorry, I have educational background. So I'm not suited to be in the bush to farm and feed my people. Mm. Everything is left in the hand of the mass people in the village who don't have money to produce and to feed the uh, uh, those in the city. Uh, you know, and Ghana is a growing population country. While our people in the village have a, a minimum capital to produce and supply to the mass people in the city. How will this be successful? And it would, it wouldn't be a high cost of food. That's the question I have, I'm asking right now and how we can solve this problem as well. Uh, with your help and with this uh, interview, I think uh, uh, the voice will reach people outside there those who have intention to invest within Africa so that we can also uh, produce something on our own instead of always relying on others to survive. Even food being the basic needs, you still import food. Then what will be the other stuff? If you food that you can produce it within your backyard, you still import it. Then how will you tackle the other side? So when I when I see this, I talk to myself, my people. So will, do we have any hope in future if we don't change what is going on? That's what I ask myself always. So I think with you, this will go far to motivate. We have Ghanaian youth outside there who have the needs and we have the capability to come and invest into our agriculture to produce this food to our, our people. And when you compare ourselves to the Western, I realize that in the Western world, one farmer can, can supply food to one million people. Oh. As you said earlier, in the Western world, uh, the state, for instance, you see that when they say someone is a farmer, he can produce large amount of food to feed mass people because it is mechanized. But here, a farmer, we think of ordinary person in the village, and this pe person to have no capacity to supply this food. So we are urging on our people outside there to invest into Ghanaian agriculture mm -hmm. so that when we are able to invest, 
and produce our basic needs. I think in within a few years, uh, we'll be able to sustain ourselves within our locality. That's and what I have for now. Thank you, Jabril. And and to uh to wrap up this interview, you know, uh what you're saying, you know, uh here we call it sustainability, you know, a community and you know, getting the investments needed to to bring to bring up that community so they can thrive and flourish on their own, you know, natural resources. And with that being said, um, one thing I, I, I want to get with you, um, you know, at another day, you know, when you have some time on your schedule, uh, I want some logistics from you, you know, because um, I want to kind of take baby steps, you know, give me like the, a certain cost required to invest in maybe like one type of crop, how much that would cost uh, like in U.S. dollars and in, in Ghanaian cities, because I have recently reached out to uh, one of my brother's friends in Ghana. I had an interest in, in coffee. I wanted to maybe uh, invest in some kind of coffee back in Ghana because Ghanaians in general, they don't drink coffee that much. But in the United States, coffee is the king of all beverages. So I figured that's a, a great investment for me. And I'm empowering my Ghanaian community back home by investing in a coffee farm. So uh, before we get off this interview, I just want to kind of put that in the back of your mind. We'll get together behind the scenes. I'll get some logistics from you like, hey, how much U.S. dollars and is it going to uh, take for me to invest in um, uh, partnering with you to maybe uh, uh, set up like a coffee farm or you know whatever whatever crop that's inexpensive to to harvest in Ghana but we can still maybe test the marketing waters and see if we can sell it out here so uh, I'll let you go but I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule and uh, I hope to uh, connect with you again all right thank you very much uh regarding the uh like the total amount for maybe which I can propose to an investor who intend uh, to have uh, a farm in Ghana. Mm -hmm. You know, with this, uh, giving a, an estimate budget for uh, agricultural uh, business, if you don't sit down or if you don't liaise with the investor, so that he will ask you a question. Gabriel, uh, what is the cost of uh, maybe labor in Ghana, seed costs, other stuff, land acquisition and stuff? I wouldn't be able to uh, just as we are speaking, tell you that, uh, man, when you get $1 million, it will be sufficient, or $2 million, it will be sufficient, or $3 million, it will be sufficient. When I do this, I will be a bit confused. Okay. Okay. And the trustworthy that maybe you have in me, that's why you contacted me to have uh, uh, maybe uh, a partnership with me will reduce because I never thought of this and I have to also sit down and have a budget on upon your request. So that I'll get back to you and tell you, man, uh, for my research, Pay your fold of uh, investing in our country. This what this is the amount I suggest is you should hold. But uh, speaking to you right now, I can't confirm this. Time. 